Call the meeting to order. I want to welcome everybody here today. Uh, we do have a number of public hearings uh, taking place, and those will happen in a few minutes. But first, I'd like to call on Councillor Fair to bring the opening, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, last week, a few of my staff and I needed to make a business trip to Houston, Texas. There was a company in Houston that was going to take care of our accommodations when we arrived. So when we uh, got there, we drove down to the motel where we, were, where we thought we were staying and uh, walked in and uh, asked if there had been reservations made for us and they were unable to find any. So seeing they had room, we decided to take these rooms anyway, believing the company had simply forgot to reserve them. The next morning we were to meet the representative in the lobby for breakfast but it's at 7, but at 7.10 he still had not arrived so I texted him and he told me he'd be down in a few minutes. After about 15 minutes I got another text and he said, he was sure we were in different motels, so, so we decided to meet at, at the uh, place of business. We spent the day there and went back to our motel to rest for a little while before we went for dinner at 5.30. One of our guys decided to uh, find a business in the, in the vicinity. He, he wanted to pick up some parts for one of his vehicles, and so he was looking on the GPS in this vehicle that uh, we had rented. And so um, I passed him my key fob and just asked him to return it to my room when he was done. So at 5.30, uh, I still didn't have my keys back, so I went back down, uh, down and, uh, to meet the guys and go for supper. Um, when, when I got downstairs, uh, one of the boys uh, told me that the other guy had gone to look for something had not yet returned. I was a bit annoyed, and so I decided to sit down beside an older gentleman on a bench outside. He uh, was very welcoming and uh, started talking to me about his life and what a mess it was. He and his wife had been uh, missionaries to Costa Rica, and now he was alone and had been abandoned by his wife and his kids. He also had several grandchildren whom he hardly knew because he had become an alcoholic. He had been to AA and detox and somehow always turned back to alcohol. I asked him if he had ever heard of an organization called Teen Challenge. He told me, no, I'm 61 years old and not a teen anymore. So I assured him that uh, he could still go there and they would help him put his life back together. So he asked why I would do anything for him. I told him that, uh, that uh, besides the fact that uh, I didn't have wheels, <laughs> uh, God had a purpose for his life and this was not it. So I connected him with Teen Challenge and so I'm hoping they will be able to help him. He actually remarked that it was very unusual that a person from Canada had come all the way to Houston, Texas and end up helping him. So the point in all of this is that there uh, were quite a few annoyances that happened in order that I, could, I would be able to reach out to this man. First the wrong motel and then my vehicle was gone for much longer than, I was, than what was uh, reasonable. So many times that is how God works. It never seems to be convenient to make a difference in someone's life. I hope and pray that this man's life will be changed as a result of our encounter. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fair. Council, we do have an uh, agenda in front of us. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda, please? Councillor Siemens, second by Councillor Swagstra. Any discussion? Yes, Call for the question. All those in favour? Carried. We have the minutes in front of us from July 4th. You've all had a chance to review those already. Can I have a motion to approve those, please? Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Funk. Any discussion? Anything further from Council? Call for the question. All those in favour? Carried. There's no business arising from the minutes. We'll now mo move to the number eight, the parking uh, ticket fines. This is a report and recommendations from the city manager, Mr. Workentine. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, I, uh, I don't have a written report. However, uh, I do have a verbal update uh, just in connection with the, uh, the ongoing uh, work that uh, council has done in uh, approving most recently the administrative penalty bylaw uh, and uh, what is also on uh, the uh, agenda for tonight for the uh, accessible parking bylaw is just a report uh, and an update on the parking fines. Uh, in uh, past committee meetings, there uh, were some suggestions from council uh, asking administration to consider a number of factors uh, when recommending uh, an update to the actual uh, parking ticket fines uh, in connection with these two bylaws. Uh, while the, uh, the fine for the uh, accessible parking uh, bylaw infractions has already been set within the bylaw, uh, under the city's uh, traffic bylaw, 
uh, that uh, particular fine provision uh, has traditionally been set by administration because it is not uh, um, indicated specifically within the bylaw. Uh, just for Council's uh, background and information, uh, the uh, current fee structure for uh, parking ticket infractions has been in place for some time. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many years, but I'd estimate about 15. Uh, currently, the uh, parking ticket infraction fine amount is $15, discounted to an amount of $10 if paid within seven days of the ticket being issued. Um, Administration has completed a, uh, a fairly extensive review of other jurisdictions in Manitoba, uh, and uh, based on that uh, investigation, we found that uh, parking fines in Manitoba communities vary from a low of $40 discounted to $10 uh, after a certain time period, uh, up to a high of $200 discounted to $25. Uh, quite a variation. Uh, however, uh, based on the uh, an overall average, uh, also looking uh, into uh, what has traditionally been the case in Steinbach, uh, recommendation is uh, that uh, the fine amounts uh, be uh, amended uh, to $40 uh, to be discounted to $20 if paid within seven days. Uh, and uh, if there is council consensus to proceed, uh, this change would become effective immediately. All right, thank you. Uh, council administration is asking whether we are comfortable with this change. Uh, how would uh, council like to proceed? Councilor Penner? Move to approve. Move to approve the recommendation. Second, seconded by Councilor Swagstra. Go ahead. Thank you. Yes, um, it, it appears that uh, our old fees are no longer uh, feasible and no longer even pay for administration fees that, that need to be for the processing. So I would think a $40 fine would be an adequate and fair amount. And then also based on the 20, if paid within seven days, that's fair too. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Swagstra. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I mean, the purpose of a, of a parking fine isn't to make money off the fines. The purpose is to encourage accurate and correct parking. And you don't want to set the fee too high because then, you know, people are afraid to park in that area and then you discourage people from parking there and shopping with businesses. But if you set it too low, then people will disregard uh, entirely. And so right now the fees are at the very, very low end. $15 isn't much of a discouragement. Uh, I think most of us are willing to take the risk if that's really all that it is. So to set it at $40 is a noticeable increase, but still on the low end compared to other communities because, again, we don't want to err on the side of having it we don't want to discourage people from parking in the in the downtown area and such. We want people to park there, but we also want people to uh, to follow the uh, the rules regarding parking. And so I think the new fee structure is, is reasonable. Thank you. Further discussion, Councillor Fair. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I will not support that. I don't think that's a deterrent at all. I've been a recipient of having to park somewhere else because uh, uh, I've had people that park there. Uh, when I really needed it, and uh, sometimes I'll take my granddaughter, and when my son was here, I had, to, I had to, actually, I had to drop my kids off sometimes, and then I had to walk from a distance and pick them up. So uh, to me, uh, this is no deterrent at all. I think it should be $100 and maybe $40 for a reduced fee, but I, this is not enough, in my opinion. Okay. Thank you. Just a point of clarification from administration. Uh, administration, is this, uh, when, does this apply to all parking tickets or uh, does it exclude uh, accessibility uh, inf parking infractions? Uh, yes, to the second. Uh, it uh, applies to all parking tickets with the exception of the uh, accessible parking uh, uh, infraction. Uh, that fine is $100 with no discount. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Fair. What about the reduced rate? Is that, that $100? Flat or is it reduced as well? Uh, no, the uh, the hundred dollar fine is not reduced. Well, that's hundred dollars. Correct. Okay, that I can move. Okay, thank you. Just I wanted that clarification for you. Anything further from uh, from council? Anything in closing? All right. Council, obviously, this is, hasn't been uh, reset in quite a number of years, in fact, a few decades, and so uh, moving from uh, $15 to $40, I think, is acceptable, and we can move forward. Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. All right, we are just past 7.35, and so now we will move into the public hearing process. We have uh, a few public hearings uh, going forward. I'm going to close the council meeting, open the public hearing in regards to two things, the bylaw 2082, as well as variation V 2017-13. 
this is on page four. Mr. Warkentine, I'll ask you to introduce this and actually, actually explain how the two parallel uh, variation, or two pa parallel uh, public hearings are taking place, please. Uh, yes, I'll uh, just for again, for clarification on introduction, uh, this is a public hearing with respect to uh, City of Steinbeck bylaw 2082 and also variance file V-2017-13. Uh, both uh, files are applicable to uh, property with a civic address of 333 Lowen Boulevard in Steinbeck. Owner of the property is Professional Investors of Steinbeck, Inc. The applicant uh, for the rezoning and the variance is Mr. Robert Roblowski of MMP Architects. Uh, and I'll explain uh, both files uh, as uh, they are being dealt with uh, concurrently. Uh, the public hearing for both particular applications is concurrent. Uh, however, uh, with uh, respect to the ordering, uh, the recommendation is that uh, the rezoning bylaw 2082 be dealt with first. Uh, and depending on that outcome, council may or may not be able to deal with the variance uh, as far as a decision. All right. So just for clarification, Mr. Warkentine, uh, uh, if there are people wishing to have questions, they can have questions on either one throughout the process of the public hearing. Uh, but then when council deals, them, deals with them, we'll deal with them one at a time. Is that correct? Okay, thank you. Just wanted to clarify that. All right. All right. Then uh, the purpose of bylaw 2082 uh, with respect to the rezoning, purpose of that application is to rezone the subject property from C4 commercial regional to RMX residential mi mixed use. Uh, secondly, uh, the variance file for this particular property purpose is to allow a maximum building height of 120 feet whereas the maximum height allowed in the RMX residential mixed use zone is 85 feet. Uh, purpose of the applications uh, uh, are that the applicant is proposing to uh, uh, develop a mixed use building uh, on the site. Notices as required under the Planning Act uh, have been issued. Uh, there are uh, two pieces of correspondence uh, having been received on the file. Uh, those pieces uh, of correspondence were placed in uh, Council's uh, mail bins, uh, either yesterday or today. Uh, one piece of correspondence uh, with respect to uh, bylaw 2082 is an objection to the rezoning. Uh, the second piece of correspondence is respect uh, to only the variance application file uh, and uh, is not a formal objection, just a uh, letter uh, of information. Um, Administration has also received a response from uh, Manitoba Community and Regional Planning Office, uh, which uh, indicates there are no objections to the application. Um, I would also like to point out uh, for Council's information, uh, both on page 5 and page 6 of the agenda package, uh, and specifically the City Planner Report, there was uh, an error uh, in that report uh, at the bottom of uh, page 5 under the section Proposed Development Details. It notes the building height being requested is 100 feet. Uh, that is an error. It should be corrected to 120 feet. Uh, and also on page 6, uh, towards the uh, latter half of the uh, main paragraph uh, of the uh, text, uh, that uh, particular reference to 100 feet uh, uh, should also be uh, amended to read 120 feet. Uh, with respect to uh, to the uh, both the zoning uh, change and the uh, and the variance application, uh, the uh, the current prop or the property in its current form is zone C4, uh, and with uh, with that particular zoning, there is currently no height restriction uh, to uh, uh, any proposed structure that may be constructed on the site, um, and. Uh, as it stands in the application, uh, the applicant is proposing a, uh, a nine-story mixed-use residential building uh, and uh, with uh, the proposed development, uh, the uh, corresponding application for the variance is requesting to vary the height from what is permitted in RMX, uh, which is currently 85 feet, to an overall uh, building height of 120 feet. Um, with respect to, uh, to both uh, files, uh, recommendation from administration is that uh, City Council uh, give a second reading to the zoning bylaw and if there are no objections, Council may proceed to give a third reading uh, and uh, administration also recommends that uh, any approvals be subject to uh, a development agreement. Thank you. 
We do have the applicant here today, or someone representing the applicant, is that correct? Would you, does the applicant wish to make a presentation? Yes, please. Okay, I'll ask you to take the podium. Please state your name and your address, and uh, then we'll proceed from there. Uh, my name is Robert Roblowski. No, that's fine. Uh, my address is 62 Willow Grove Road, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Thank you. Go ahead. Do you mind if I stand in the front and... Uh, the problem, the, the reason uh, you have to actually address the chair, and the second is that it, you are recorded and it needs to be uh, through there, so you will need to remain at the podium, please. Okay. Um, I'd like to first talk about uh, the variance and the need for the variance and why it's important to this project. Um, there hasn't been a lot of information that has been released about what this project is all about. I heard it described this evening as a mixed-use residential project, which probably would trigger condominiums or apartments in most people's minds. Um, I'd like to talk about why it's important that we rezone this property for this particular building. What we're proposing here is called a CCRC, which is a Continuing Care Retirement Community. Um, it's going to be the first of its kind in Canada. It's very important, certainly not only to the province, but to the progression of long-term care facilities throughout Canada. We lag behind uh, very badly compared to the states who uh, have developed different uh, small house models in looking after their aged population. Uh, currently, this province has uh, suspended all the personal care home projects that were in the dockets. And this private developer um, is willing to move forward with a brand new template that focuses on resident focused care first in a small house model. And, and the main difference is that in a current institutional model that a province builds, um, you nourish, you shelter and you protect, but there's no quality of life. In the CCRCs that I've been researching and I'm an advocate for and I've been presenting for three years now at Environment for Aging conferences, we provide a resident focused care that understands the triggers of Alzheimer's and memory care environments and design the environments and the staffing models that are consistent with making the quality of life a priority for individuals so that they can live the last chapters of their lives in dignity. And we do not currently have that current model. In Manitoba, there are six small house models in Canada. There are over 4,200 small house models that recognize the smaller population sizes for the small host groups in, in the states. So the reason I wanted to go into a little more detail about that this evening is we were not going to give a lot of that information initially as the project was moving forward. We have not had the opportunity to finish our meetings with the provincial government. So it was a bit sensitive, but my client and I felt it was important that the residents that are in, ob in objection to our project here understand the importance of the project. And the fact of the matter is, we could build the Steinbeck Credit Union on this property and leave the zoning as is. Um, this building is a nine-story building. The first five stories are the personal care, long-term care facility piece. Uh, then the building steps back 35 feet for the next three stories from uh, six, seven, and eight, and the ninth floor steps back another 20 feet. So the building is tiered to the ninth, the ninth floor. Um, and we've done a shadow study as well, and, and that's available, and I've also got uh, drawings that I can distribute to the area residents that show the little impact to no impact that this building has with the shadows, with the exception of December 21st, which is your winter solstice, which even a fire hydrant is going to have an impact on your property if we were to do the shadow study on, on that. So that's why it's important that we get, that we get this variance, because the existing C4 zoning allows us to build a Steinbeck credit union there, but it doesn't allow us to build a personal care home. So we have to go to the RMX zoning uh, occupancy classification, so we're permitted to build this use. And unfortunately, it comes with an 85-foot height restriction. Our building, we've asked for 120. We've now gotten far enough along with the project that it looks more like it'll be about 107 feet. And again, that's to the ninth story, which is set back considerably from the first five. So I wanted to bring that information to the Light of Council so that they understand what it is that we're trying to do. Um, this project would bring Stein back to the forefront of long-term care and receive national recognition immediately 
as one of the first CCRCs built in Canada. Thank you. Anything further to add at this time? Uh, no. Okay. There may be some questions from uh, uh, people in the audience, and so we'll get them to state either their objection or questions, and then we'll have, probably have you come back up to respond. That sounds great. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone here wishing to object or have any questions on either the variation or the zoning application? Okay. Please take the podium and state your name and address. Uh, Gary Clausen, 104 Albert Street. The concerns that we have on Albert Street is parking, first of all. Secondly, uh, the amount of traffic that will that this kind of structure will provide. Thirdly, uh, the safety of the street. We have, there are some young families there, children, our children, they will, as much as we try and train, keep them in, and in our case, it's our grandchildren. Uh, just since Stonebridge has opened up, our traffic has increased tenfold. And, uh, you know, uh, we see the risks that it poses to our community. And another thing that we're questioning about is uh, property value. What will this do as far as will it drag our, our properties down? And if so, uh, you know, like that would be a very big concern for us because there's a lot of us that we're an aging community and we're kind of banking on the equity of our properties. So those are the concerns I have, as well as, you know, a nine-story building. I mean, uh, I'd welcome to have a, a facility like that, but why right there? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I see those four questions. We'll ask the applicant to, uh, to respond to them, but before that, I might want to go through if there are any other questions. Any other questions or objections specifically? Okay. Please uh, take the podium, state your name and address. Hi, uh, Christopher Kaler, 125 Albert. Uh, this question, I guess, is more for council as well as Mr. Workington. If the zoning is approved and the conversations with the provincial government do not go as planned in terms of that, is it still wide open? Is, is it still, if, yeah, if it's rezoned to commercial mixed use, a personal care home doesn't end up in there, or are we looking at a condo building? Fair question. Thank you. Any other questions or objections? Any other questions? Yep. Yeah. Please state your name and address. You'll see a trend here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tony Hebert and my wife Luella, who live 135 Albert Street, right the adjoining property to the north of the proposed building. So. Uh, I have been involved with construction and building for 45 years of my life and I know that in dealing, and I know we are not dealing with customers here, but to be considerate and to be, uh, to uh, try to accommodate has been my motto over the years and it has worked well. Uh, I don't know if I have an objection to the rezoning, but uh, I, I definitely have, would have an objection to the variance the because height. of the, the height of the building. Okay. So, because that, and I would like to have everyone, uh, the people involved consider privacy. And to me, privacy, I mean, especially because we're the adjoining property, uh, we're losing our privacy. So uh, I would like them to consider that. Okay. So it's an objection uh, to the variance. Yeah, the to the height of the building. But not necessarily to the rezoning. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other, anyone else either have any objection or would like, yeah, or a question? Go ahead. Um, well, Wilfred Gerhardt, I live at uh, 112 Albert Street. I know that there's going to be some kind of a structure replacing the clinic, so but uh, my objection would be to the height of the building, so the variance. Thank you. Further, yeah, go ahead, take the. 
Andrew McDonald on 140 Elbert Street, right across the street from the parking lot. Um, objection, a couple of thoughts and objections. Uh, thoughts, personal hair, oh, home care. Okay, you know what, that's actually a good idea. I think we have a shortage in, in Steinbeck. So, okay, that's cool. I'm, I'm down with that. I'm also down with uh, being four liters in that. That's cool too. Um, it's the objection to the height. Like that's, that's like almost the height of the credit union building. We're getting up there. It's high for the credit union. So does it, does it need to be so high? I like the idea, don't like the height. I get that the building needs to be replaced. It's an, going to be an empty facility. Great, yeah, let's, let's do something there, but it doesn't need to be so high. And I know we've asked, me and my wife have asked the city to look at traffic on that street too. I have two kids that walk down a very busy road to school. Sidewalk, maybe? in there somewhere there too would be helpful if we want to be increasing flow of traffic. Very good, thank you. So again, uh, just to restate, uh, that was an objection to the height, uh, not necessarily to the rezoning. Okay, thank you. Further objections or questions? Further objections or questions? One final ask, any further objections or questions? We're going to ask the applicant to take the, the podium again and just to, to go through some of the questions and the concerns and, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, as you're taking the podium, I'm going to ask Mr. Warkentine uh, for any clarification on sidewalks on, on Albert Street. Are there any current plans for sidewalks on Albert Street? Uh, immediate plans, there are none. Uh, however, uh, I believe there was uh, a request uh, filed at uh, recently asking Steinbeck City Council to request consideration of sidewalk on that street. Uh, yeah, that was for Mr. McDonald. Right. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. So I state my name and address again? No, you don't have to. No. We, we know who you are. It's not quite the same <laughs> cabinet. Um, there are a lot of a uh, lot of issues raised there, so yeah. you might have to remind me. Of sure. Uh, why don't I go through two at a time, and then you can go from there. And, and uh, parking was a, was an issue, uh, and traffic. So maybe go through those two yeah. first. So uh, the parking, um, I understand that that is a concern. If you look at the site plan that I handed out, uh, you'll, it's hard to see because it's a shadow study, but on the north side of the property, we have one access off of Albert Street that leads to a below-grade parkade. So along that north edge, there was one gentleman that was concerned about privacy. There will actually be a wall built along that parkade, so you'll have more privacy than you do now. The number of cars that are using the lower grade parkade structure is 33 apartments. So you're going to have 33 seniors coming and going in, in off of Albert Street, which is very minimal. 33 people coming into an apartment building in a senior's housing complex. These aren't, these aren't the visitors, these are just the people that are living there, but might they come once or twice a day? So we're looking at maybe 60 activities coming on that property down Albert Street. There's no other access off of Albert Street that leads to the commercial part of our project. Just dedicated specifically to the below grade parkade. I'll talk about the amount of traffic now. Yeah. I can't imagine having more traffic on Lowen than what a medical clinic would be driving. This, this project is going to be a lot less traffic than a medical clinic. I have not done a traffic study. I can't say that with certainty, but I think we can all rely upon our common sense. We know the amount of activity that a medical clinic drives. People are coming in half hour and 45 minute visitations. There's 40 doctors there. You cannot tell me that that is going to be less traffic along low end than what a personal care home is going to be. So I think both of those issues are, are quite well addressed. Okay, There's thank no you. concern. Thank you. Uh, then safety of the street and property values. So safety of the street, does that relate to the amount of traffic possibly? I, get I would imagine it, it, that it may. It might involve sidewalks. It might involve a few of those things, yeah. So I can't comment on that other than, again, reassuring that the amount of traffic we're generating on Albert for 33 people is minimal. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's a concern about property value. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you're prepared to talk about that. Well, I have an opinion about that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the facts are that if we wanted to build the Steinbeck Credit Union project, 
that exact building. By the way, it's taller than our building. I heard somebody say that our building was taller. It's actually quite a bit taller than ours because the floor to floor heights are 15 feet and 20 feet. So it's a taller building than what we're proposing. If we wanted to build that building on your property, we wouldn't even have to be here today. We can go ahead and build that commercial building on your, right in your neighboring property because the current property is zoned that way. In fact, I can build two Steinbeck credit unions on top of each other on that property without any opposition. And what we're coming to you today is to ask us to build literally five stories of the first PCH frontage and then the building terrace is back as opposed to what potentially could be a 15-story straight-up office tower. And it would seem to me that an office tower or heavy-use commercial would be, have more of an impact on your property values than what a personal care home would have. Okay. So that's my opinion about that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you have already addressed somewhat the, the privacy uh, in regards to height, because there's some privacy concerns when it comes to height. Do you want to talk about that? And I think that has to do with the tiering. Is that correct? Privacy from individuals looking down onto neighboring properties. Um, first five stories are your residence. Um, the small house model focuses on a design that has perimeter bedrooms and everybody shares a center communal living, dining and kitchen space. So there's no central kitchen, there's no central dining that you get two wards of 20 that come to amalgamate and share that space. So my point is that around the perimeter where the windows are facing on the north side are all bedrooms of residents that will be in bed by 8 o'clock. Their main activity living area is internal to that floor plan and the decks that they have are in the front facing low and on the south. So it's not an issue. Okay. Thank you. And. Uh the last question was probably to administration, but I'll get you to remain up there because I'll give you, the, you uh, any final comments you'd like to make. Uh, Mr. Workentine, when it comes to the rezoning, if, for example, uh, the, uh, the fund, if there is funding being looked at for this model and it doesn't go through and this project does not proceed as presented, uh, the question w uh, presented was uh, if the rezoning takes place, does that mean other things can be built there? Uh, the simple answer would be yes. Uh, there, uh, there is a, uh, a fairly detailed explanation as to what are typically permitted uses in the RMX zone. Um, generally, uh, that particular zone is intended, uh, and I'll just read excerpts here. Uh, it's intended to facilitate the development of primarily medium to higher density residential development um, though it may also contain limited small-scale commercial, institutional, uh, recreation and service facilities needed to support that particular residential development. Uh, there uh, is uh, or are a number of uh, RMD, residential medium density uh, properties in the area. Uh, in particular, um, Bridge Park uh, Manor developed on Stonebridge Crossing in two phases over a number of years. Uh, that uh, has, I believe, 102 residential units. Uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, it, it is a higher density property. However, uh, because of the height, it's considered medium density uh, within the zoning category. Uh, this property, for all intents and purposes, uh, would be similar uh, with the, uh, the unique uh, difference in that it also does allow some commercial use. Okay. Thank you. So it doesn't go with a project, it goes with a property, is that correct? Thank you. All right, uh, any final word? Just the importance of this project. This is again, this is something that will receive national recognition. This is something the province will continue to use as a template moving forward for long-term care projects. They've recognized my design guidelines that they're incorporating into the province. This is a project that is as important to Manitoba and Canada and it's in your backyard in Steinbeck. It will be something you will be proud of. I assure you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions council have? Uh, sorry, we, and now council will have uh, just a couple of questions before we close sure. the public hearing. Councillor Spikes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got a couple of questions. First of all, just to clarify, how, what is the total number of residential units that would be within this building? There are 33 apartments. Okay. There are 56 supportive living. There are 56 long-term care. 
Levels one and two, long-term care levels, I'm sorry, levels one and two, supportive living, levels three and four, long-term care. Thank you. So yep. just so that's, so 145 total, is that uh, <coughs> adding quickly? Sure. 56, 56, 33, okay. Uh, the second question, because uh, I'm just looking at the diagram that we have in our package, and uh, again, it's a relatively small diagram that we have here. Uh, it doesn't appear on the upper levels that there are windows. Are there windows? Or, or what's, uh, because the first five levels I can see, you know, the windows where people can look out, and there's the question that's been asked about the privacy. Do they, do they, all the floors have windows? That, how high up do the residences go? They all have windows. Okay. Yeah, so I'm they, just looking at this, uh, and I'm not. Right. It, it's so at the top. It looks like there's no windows. Simplify. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What you're looking okay. at is a very early concept of just massing. Oh, just okay. to give you an indication of the size of the building on the property, we're still not finished designing it. And, and, and yes, to answer your question, the. All of the apartments will, of course, have windows, as will all of the supportive living and personal care residents. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? Councillor Penner. Yes. Um, I would like to know, um, you talked about uh, commercial use on the top floors. Top two, is that correct? The top floor is a restaurant. Okay. And what other commercial uses are anticipated? So we have other commercial uses on the main floor, and that would be all. And the main floor, we're anticipating, we'd like to see a daycare. We would like to see three different retail type of activities that are consistent and appropriate for a well, long-term care facility. So they would be um, physiotherapy, PTOT, medically based retail outlets that have a direct relationship to gerontology and the ongoing care of the residents. Thank you. Okay, thank you. For the questions from Council? Councillor Fair. Uh, yes, through you, Ms. Rear. Uh, that corner, and I happen to drive that corner every day, uh, Albert Street and uh, Lone Boulevard. Yes. How would the dynamics change if there was to be a stop sign at the corner there uh, for the, you know, entrance and exit off of the, off of the parking lot? Would that then make it more practical to come off of Albert Street? Um, you try to get onto, you know, you try to get off onto the high, onto the road there. There's days when it's almost impossible. You, you know, onto Lowen? You can't, you can't get on onto Lowen Boulevard off of Albert. I see. So I, 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 it's been gnawing at my heart already for a while that we need a stop sign here. If we are going to have a stop sign right at the corner there to get off of that corner, it might be a little bit of a challenge. And that might make it more with the flow of the traffic a little bit better coming off of the back uh, of the parking lot. Or, Side somewhere. So you're proposing to slow the traffic traveling east-west on Lowen with a stop sign? Yeah. Uh, we certainly wouldn't have an objection to that. Uh, the impact that we have on Albert Street is minimal. I come from, I've got two daughters with four cars in my family. They'll have more activity in my driveway than, than this project is going to have with 33 seniors living in apartments. Like it's, it's really I very minimal. I disagree. Sorry, sorry. Please. And so people coming out of the building moving on to Lowen, if they were a stop sign, sure. You know, that certainly would have no impact on our project. They would. All right. I'm not saying it's going to impact the, the, the traffic. I'm just saying what would it do if there was a stop sign? It would not impact our project. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? Councillor Swipes. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, where is this at in terms of uh, government approval and such? Like, is, this some, is this where you know, it's, it's very close? Is it partially speculative? What, uh, where is that? Like, obviously, there's, there's, it, there must, it must be reasonably far along if it's proceeded at this level. But where is that at? Well, let me describe it to you as a private project first, because we have no commitments from the government at this point. We've met with government a few times, and the project's been well received. I've sat on a task force with the new government. I've been asked to represent long-term care and provide new ideas to build 1,800 long-term care beds and assist the task force with our new government in that agenda. So I understand what the issues are. There hasn't been a single project announced yet, and we don't anticipate that there's going to be one soon. So my client is bold enough to take on this project on her own with or without government assistance. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Siemens. Uh, through you to administration. Uh, is there, under the development agreement, is there a traffic impact study being uh, as part of the development agreement? 
Uh, presently, we have, uh, have not uh, indicated a requirement that the applicant uh, complete one. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Further questions? Yeah, question. One more question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just, to, just to go back to in terms of the number of units. So, you know, 56 purse to care home or like beds and then 56 supportive housing and 33 apartments. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, you mentioned in terms of, in terms of traffic, 33 seniors. Are you factoring in, you know, 56, like sort of the other components there as far as traffic? Where would that be more or what's, uh, what's your assessment of that? So I want to be very clear on this. The 33 seniors I'm referring to are the top three floors of apartments, and they are the only individuals that will be trafficking down Albert Street. All the other residents will be coming, visitors to residents, residents, supportive living, personal care folks don't drive. So they don't impact on the amount of vehicles on the property. The visitors do. Visitors to the restaurant will also impact the traffic. They do not come down Albert Street. They all access the property from Lowen Boulevard. Thank you. No other questions? Uh, Councillor Funk. Okay, the, uh, the numbers you've given us with these, the apartments, the uh, long-term care, and the, the extra care, does, if, if the uh, height's reduced and these numbers are reduced, does that affect your, your possible chances of getting uh, uh, government funding? Significantly. The reason for the fact that we don't have any personal care homes being built is because the province doesn't have the money to build a personal care home. Personal care bed costs $450,000. The government has reached out to private developers and said we would like ideas on how to reach our goal of 1,800 beds. The only way to build a business model that will support the cash neutral position of long-term care beds is by bringing additional revenues into the mix, which include your supportive living units and includes the three levels of apartments. Without any one of those components, the business model suffers. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Okay. All right. Just uh, before I close the public hearing, uh, we, we, this is a public hearing in regards to two items specifically, and that is the rezoning, which is going from C4 down to a residential mixed use. And then the other aspect is the variation when it comes to height. And so far, uh, we've heard very clearly from the uh, people who are here that the, that the rezoning isn't as much of a deal and there actually aren't any official objections here, although we do have one here. But there, is, uh, cer there are certainly objections to the height. Uh, so just wanting to, wanting to be clear on that is what, what we've heard. I will now close the public hearing on both the variation and the, uh, and the rezoning, and I'm going to open the council meeting. Council, we will only deal with the rezoning at this time, not the, not the uh, variation in height because of an objection, uh, but I will ask council how you'd like to proceed with the rezoning. Councillor Spikestra. I'll move a second reading of the rezoning. Okay, move second reading of the rezoning. Councillor Penner seconds that. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We've heard, we've got, gotten a lot of information today, both from the applicant and from the residents, and that's information that we need to take into account uh, in terms of making a decision. Uh, the specific thing that we're voting on right now is only the rezoning, and on the face of it, it is clear that uh, a residential mixed use uh, does not have more of an impact on a neighborhood than a C4, which is regional commercial. I mean, regional commercial is the highest density commercial option that we have within the city as far as commercial development. So it is true that you could build a building of, of any height of, if it was fully commercial. And so that is the reality that, I mean, the, the, personal, uh, the, uh, the, the clinic that's been there, obviously traffic there is quite significant. It's a high activity area. So rezoning it to allow for residential component, I think, makes sense. I do like the idea of having additional uh, personal care home beds and supportive housing and that sort of thing. I mean, that's, we need that in time. We urgently do. Uh, we have heard you know, questions and concerns from neighbors, but that, of course, deals with the variation that we're not addressing at this point right now because it's a moot point if the rezoning doesn't go ahead. Uh, but I do think that as far as the rezoning goes, that it does seem uh, like a, a reasonable use of the property. So I will move, move that we go ahead with the rezoning. Thank you. Councillor Penner? Yeah, the rezoning uh, portion of this is, I think, quite straightforward, so I have no trouble supporting it. Okay, thank you. Further discussion from Council? Councillor Councilor Fair. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. If you look at the uh, rest haven, um, I, you know, the parking lot is a lot smaller than what this is, and the traffic is not terribly significant there unless they have to, uh, there, there happens to be a function in the evening. So I, I don't think that traffic is going to be um, uh, an issue there. 
I think the rezoning is actually, uh, you know, technically, without the variance, the rezoning is actually the objector's friends here today. And uh, because with the, with the rezoning, the restrictions are actually increased because they could build a 150 foot building there without doing the rezoning. So I think there's no, no harm in, in, in rezoning it. The height is something that's gonna have to be addressed at, at a future meeting if this doesn't, if doesn't uh, uh, I think there is an objection here too. Anyway, so it will need to go to the municipal board anyway. So I think, I think at this time, I think it's probably in our best interest to give it a second reading and then we'll let it carry the day from there. So. Thank you. Further, di further discussion? Anything further? Anything in closing? All right, Council, obviously we have uh, only one thing in front of us today, and that is the rezoning aspect, the variation for the height we will deal with at a different time because of the objection uh, uh, if this does proceed. Uh, but we certainly did hear some concerns when it came to uh, safety of the street and sidewalks and so on. I think it's important for us to consider that as, as we move forward uh, with some of our deliberations if this type of project does proceed. Uh, and uh, we, for now, we will deal specifically with the rezoning. We have a motion on the floor to, uh, to move forward on second reading of rezoning from C4 to residential mixed use. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. So we will not proceed with third reading until we go through the municipal board process. Uh, if, there's a, if that does proceed, then we will end up with a third reading uh, where council will again deliberate this as well as the variation for the uh, height. And so at this time, we will not deal with the height restriction. Uh, we will move forward with the municipal board process. So thank you. Council, we will now move to 6B, the variation V, 2017-11, 66 Wyndham Estate Drive on page 21. Mr. Warkentine, I'll ask you to introduce this, please. Go ahead, Mr. Warkentine. Uh, this is an application for variance file V-2017-11, uh, property with civic address of 66 Windham Estate Drive. Uh, owner uh, and applicant for the variance uh, is Mammoth Homes, Inc. Purpose of the variance application is twofold. Firstly, to allow a front yard setback of 24.65 feet, whereas the minimum setback required in the RSF residential single family zone is 25 feet. And second, to allow a northwest side yard setback of 2.8 feet, whereas a setback of five feet is required for the corner side yard uh, in this same zone. Uh, purpose of the application is uh, with respect to a new house that was built on the property and uh, an error was uh, discovered uh, at time of uh, construction. Notices as required under the Planning Act have been issued. There, are no, uh, there is no correspondence on the file. Uh, with uh, respect to, uh, to the uh, particular application, uh, it, uh, it has been noted uh, the builder recognized the mistake uh, after construction was uh, essentially complete uh, and uh, is requesting the variance to bring this house into compliance. Uh, both, uh, or I should say administration has reviewed the matter and however, uh, even though the, uh, the side yard is uh, significantly less than uh, what is required, uh, for a corner lot, um, the uh, overall uh, consideration of the application recommendation from administration uh, is that uh, council approve. Thank you. Is the applicant here or someone representing the applicant? Thank you. Does the applicant wish to speak today? Uh, sure. Okay. You saw how it's done? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Please state your name and address. Greg Volt, 880 Main Street. Uh, yeah. I the president of Mammoth Homes Inc. Uh, this is a house that we subcontracted the concrete on and uh, we did get the lot surveyed. We did tell the concrete, concrete contractor to stay 25 and a half feet back from the front and six feet from the side but because it's a curved street he had pulled a straight string. So from a straight string it is six feet and 25 and a half feet not accounting for the curve in the street in both directions. That's where the air came. And uh, I've already gotten hydro, hydro gas, MTS and Shaw to uh, 
redo that because I know we're over the easement and I've talked to the developer and notified them of the mistake made and they haven't okayed it but they said they wouldn't come and fight it so very good thank you all, I have. Yeah. all right is there any questions for the applicant sounds like you've gone through sounds like you don't want to do this again I don't everyone <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll close the public hearing, open the, very, uh, open the uh, council meeting. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Fair? Thank you. Councillor Funk? Seconds that. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. It looks like uh, this is something that, that was an, an, an honest mistake, and it looks like the uh, uh, developer has taken steps to uh, remedy, remedy it without having to be prodded by uh, the uh, city staff. So I think. Uh, People do make mistakes, and it's nice that they recognize and they're prepared to live with it. All. Yep. Further discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very much. It's easier than dealing with hydro, I bet, eh? Oh. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, Council will now move to uh, 9A accounts payable in the back of the book. You've all had a chance to review that. Can I have a motion to approve? Councillor Siemens, seconded by Councillor Susan Penner. Thank you. Any discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. You, you moved your hair aside. And that's, uh... That makes me really suspicious, though. <laughs> <laughs> 9B, we have financial statements ending July, June 30th in the back of the book as well. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Penner, seconded by Councillor Swagstra. Any discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. We have building permits for June. This is on page 30, but you actually had a corrected version. Council, you obviously see that we're just shy of $30 million for the first half of the year. Significant year. Uh, over $8 million for June alone and, and 37 new housing uh, or new dwelling units. That's a great start. Obviously, we have good things going on in our community. There's a motion on the bottom of that page. Can I have someone move that, please? Councillor Funk, second by Councillor Fair. Any discussion? All I'd like to say is, yes, a great month. We had an awesome month, and I've noticed that we've even got, uh, this month, we have some commercial additions and stuff like that. So that's really good. Yep. Maybe there's a few more jobs in it for us. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. We have excavator licenses on page 32. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Swagstra, second by Councillor Penner. Any discussion? We should do this excavator license, and I defy anyone to explain why we shouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I went through this carefully, and this makes a lot of sense. We've got to approve this. You have, you have I do have a question. Why do, why do we have to approve these? Mr. Workentine, the question is why do we have to approve these? Uh, there is a normal process that Council uh, proceeds through for uh, any license approval, uh, such as business licenses. Uh, excavator licenses are uh, considered uh, similar, uh, and both are normally adopted and approved by Council. Thank you. Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. We now have bylaw 2083. This is accessible parking bylaw. This is page 36, third reading. Council, you've seen this numerous times. Mr. Workington, anything to add? Nothing new, Mr. Mayor. All right. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Penner. Move to approve. Thank you. Second by Councillor Fair. Go ahead. Yes, we've, uh, we've already discussed this a few times, so um, this is third reading, and let's, uh, let's get it enacted. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Council, Councillor out. Fair, anything further? <laughs> Anything further from Council? Call for the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, any questions of Council? Any, uh, and now we have correspondence on the uh, St. Rat River Conservation District uh, minutes for the last two meetings on page 39. Take that as information. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn, please. Councillor Penner, seconded by Councillor Fair. All those in favor? Carried.